track, got back, did a little bit. Now we hardy, fucky, tough, do rag and tims. Kinda hard to get a job back out on the block. Charge that to the game. Young girl, she grew up in a rush. Had it bad, no doubt she don't know who to trust. Every man she ever loved only want to crush. Charge that to the Welcome to Expose Under the Sun. My name is Carla Mitchell. I am your guest host for today, sitting in for Sharon Dumas. The show is brought to you live by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper, publisher Valerie Lockhart. Thank you for taking the time to view the show today. I wanted to personally welcome you to the Expose Under the Sun. Today is my first solo segment, and I um, have had the opportunity to be a guest on the show, but today I occupy the host seat. So I invite you to call into the show and engage me as your host and ask any health question, health-related question that you might have. I am a clinical traditional naturopath, which means that I deal in all things natural, building on the work in the community that was begun by Dr. Kifa and uh, Dr. Jesse Brown and others in the holistic health community. Today, I want to talk about, oh, let me give you the number to the show. The number to the show is 313-868-0342 or 868-0351. I welcome any health-related question that you might have. I'd love to offer insight on what natural options are available to you. Um, and today, I want to open the show discussing health freedom. It's not a topic that we talk much about in the community, but it's certainly one that we should be talking more about. Uh, a lot of legislation affects our health freedoms and our ability to choose what we do with our bodies. And so I am here advocating the science of self-care the way grandma used to do it. So health freedom is a concept that understands that medicine in its traditional format um, is very limiting. It doesn't take into account the whole body in some respects. And also it has um, a lot of rigid restrictions that don't consider other things that happen in the body. Most of us know that uh, we have a healthcare system that focuses a lot on symptoms and medication. And really people are becoming more and more interested in natural ways to address common conditions in the body. And so what health freedom allows is choice. Uh, choice. It, it allows us choice and freedom to look at those alternative things that could be just as helpful, if not more helpful, than commonly prescribed medications. So I would encourage you uh, to call into the show and ask questions about those commonly diagnosed conditions because as we know in our community, African, Amer African Americans are more widely diagnosed with conditions such as hypertension and diabetes. And there are also natural things that you can do about that. I often tell my clients that diabetes, early state onset diabetes and hypertension are two conditions that are reversible by diet alone. So if you add to that um, alternative therapies like homeopathy and herbal medicine, you can increase your chances of bringing your body back into a balanced and healthy state. When we um, talk about health freedom, we are focusing on those elements of traditional medicine that are narrow in nature. There are a number of things that we can do, um, such as acupuncture, reflexology, various forms of detoxifying the body and cleansing the body using natural methods and some of the harsher ways that we've been taught to do it traditionally. So um, I want to engage the community in this discussion about health freedom and what you can do to become an advocate for self-care and how you can use your health care dollars wisely. I often try to educate people and let them know that your health care dollars are just like money in your pocketbook or your purse strings. And a lot of times when we go to the doctor, we allow um, our doctors to tell us what's going on in our body when what we normally need to do is explain and allow the doctor to confirm if those are the things that are happening in our body. I always tease my clients and I say, you occupy your body 100% of the time. Who else knows what's going on in your body better than you? You live there. So health freedom is about 
understanding that no one knows your body better than you and that you have to put your health care dollars to work for you. And health freedom is about advocating for laws and legislation that allow you to make choices or have the freedom of choice about where your health care dollars go. As you know, a lot of times alternative methods are not paid for by insurance. And so health freedom is about advocating that that is an option and a choice for you. So when we talk about health freedom, it's your freedom, your freedom of choice, your freedom to exercise traditional and indigenous methods of healing. Um, And by indigenous methods of healing, I'm talking about just plain old chicken noodle soup, the things that our grandparents used to do way back when. I was raised by my grandmother. I seldom mention um, or re- even remember her taking us to the doctor. I think she had a natural solution for every ailment that uh, would come up for us in every season. Um, simple things such as cinnaleaf tea that she would give us to reset our, cell, our, our bodies at each season. These are practices that I hope in my work in the community will allow people to start to reevaluate and reclaim as simple methods of prevention versus seeing people in our community in crisis and trying to uh, find ways to heal themselves using things that are not helpful to the body. So think about health freedom, research health freedom, go online and talk, uh, you know, research and look at the topic health freedom and see the vast amounts of information in legislate legislation not just in Michigan but in other states um, and become an advocate for health freedom and health choice that's the only way you're going to understand how simple it is to prevent disease instead of getting in crisis they've always said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and I certainly believe that um, I want to invite you to call into the show the number here to the show is 313-868-0342 Looking ahead at um, what topics are trending in medical news today and how, from a natural health perspective, we can kind of approach those things. Uh, In the news today, there is a story about prostate cancer mortality. And prostate cancer is a huge deal because I have always said that our men don't go to the doctor. They are reluctant to go to the doctor for whatever reason it could be for fear it could be time because they're breadwinners and they don't want to take off from work it could be a number of things but prostate cancer mortality the rate of mortality is starting to increase and it's because our men are not being screened for prostate cancer and they are not aware of those things that they can do in their bodies to kind of prevent these conditions from getting worse or even identifying them early one of the things that we do at Exhalation Integrative Wellness is talk a lot about, a, about prevention. We use herbalism as a tool to teach people to care for themselves. So uh, a lot of traditional medicine and traditional healing practices involve the use of plant medicine. Simple, as simply as making a tea out of leaves and herbs and tree barks can really help promote longevity in the life of anyone who is seeking to do that. And so I encourage people to engage me um, here at the station, 313-868-0342. And to also um, find us on the web, our website is www.eiw-dt.com. Uh, Also, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, EIWDT is the handle. If you look up either of those places, you'll find us on the web. Um, Another thing that I think is important in our community that we don't talk about enough, man, is mental health. Just talking about what's happening in the news. I know most of you have seen recently this young man, Keaton Jones, that was online who was crying about bullying. And as it turned out, if the things that I am reading are true, it is because this kid had used racial slurs against another kid and the other kid retaliated. But in the instance of this case, I am less concerned about the mom who they're saying is racist, but more concerned about the mental health of these children and the children under age 12 who are making headlines, um, harming themselves as a result of Um, less than optimal mental health. Mental health is a real condition in our community. 
And it's something that we don't talk about. And if we understand traditional and conventional medicine, um, we know that oftentimes prescriptions are given that are more harmful than they are helpful to um, people who suffer from mental health conditions. And so there are a couple of resources that I'd like to offer to the community um, with regard to mental health resources. The Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority offers a mental health first aid training that is absolutely free to the community. I would encourage you to go to www.dwmha.com and see if they have upcoming community training available. This mental health first aid class really helps the everyday person identify signs and signals of people who may be suffering silently from mental health conditions. I know I as a mom, I have a child who is seven and I can't imagine my child not being able to express himself because of some mental health challenge that's created by a bully or by um, an environment in school. Kids can be cruel and we never really know um, at seven or eight or nine or ten uh, kids are it's difficult for them to express themselves and so I would encourage people in the community to become trained because we are each other's keeper and the Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority does offer a uh, community-based training called Mental Health First Aid, which really helps, like I said, the um, everyday person recognize signs and symptoms of mental health. And then, you know, you have a whole population of people in the community who have mental health challenges, who have seen a doctor, and really don't like the way medicine makes them feel, so they don't take it. And these people are also suffering in silence and subjecting themselves to different um, signals and triggers that might set them off. And so that's not safe for them, but it's also not safe for people in the community. So as a naturopath and a clinical herbalist, I offer that there are natural ways and natural things to consider to help people who have mental health challenges. I mean, we teach that the gut, the stomach, is the second brain, and the condition of the stomach can affect how the brain balances and releases chemicals and signals, which are sometimes read to be mental health challenges. And so again, this is a conversation that I think the community really needs to start to have as it relates to health freedoms and health choices. If you or a loved one are suffering from mental health conditions, you find yourself in a situation where you don't like the way the medicine is making you feel, but your doctor does not give you options or choices, we are here as a resource for you. Um, again, my name is Dr. Carla Mitchell, and I um, am the Principal Practitioner at Exhalation Integrative Wellness, building on the work of the likes of Dr. Kifa and Dr. Jesse Brown, and just bringing natural resources to the community. Our website is www.eiw-dt.com. All of our consultations are free because we understand the importance of getting this information out there. You'd be surprised what people don't know and understand about their own health. We have been socialized to think that it's somebody else's responsibility to ensure that we live a long time. And I am here to say that longevity is my responsibility. Longevity is your responsibility. You live in your body. You know what it needs, so why not learn what to give it? And we're here to do that for you. So I want to give you that resource again about mental health first aid. That is the Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority, and they offer um, mental aid for mental health first aid training, so that the layperson can recognize when somebody needs help, and they also give you a number of resources to utilize when you find someone in that situation. Just after the break, we're going to take a break here shortly. Just after the break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about holiday hacks. The holidays are here, guys, and I know in the new year, we typically focus on those things that we need to do to undo all of the fun and enjoyment that we had during the holidays. So I'd like to share with you that, and I'd also like to talk to you about um, health happenings on the other side of the break, what's going on in the city this weekend that you can get out and engage with regards to health, whether that's moving your body and dancing, or if it's just getting some information in a workshop or something else. I'm happy to show that to you just after the break. Thank you so much.
I pledge to stay drug free. I plan to stay drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. I pledge to be drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. Welcome back to Expose Under the Sun. I am Carla Mitchell, your guest host for today, sitting in for Sharon Dumas. And you've just joined us after the break where we have a caller. Caller, thank you for calling into the show. Good afternoon. This is Mr. Eugene. Good afternoon, Mr. Eugene. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. You have a so question? I, yeah, so I was calling in. I have a, uh, I have a comment, and then I have a question. Um, the, the show is very informative so far. Well, my, my comment is regarding um, prostate cancer and prostate cancer awareness. Um, I just wanted your listeners to know that the men that are listening that there are some there are some other components to prostate cancer that they should absolutely consider. Um, and a couple of those are some of the you talked about herbs, but you didn't speak of all of them. I wanted you to maybe speak of some herbs like maybe turmeric and ginger root or some things that help with prostate health. And then maybe also talk, touch on a couple of things regarding prostate health that men can do in regards to their daily physical activity. For example, in my research, I know that if we, if we overuse our wedding tackle, that it can sometimes get us in a position that I struggle with our prostate later on because of the hyperactivity of all of the things that are going on in that area. So if you could talk about that for, for a second, I would appreciate that. And then I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about uh, medical, me medical marijuana. You were talking about some of the um, natural remedies. And our so a lot of people in our community tend to believe that this treated and chemicalized version of the hemp plant it has some... Um, medicinal purposes to it. Could you kind of talk about if that's true or false, and then what what they really should be doing with the with the hemp plant? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Eugene, for calling in. You've given me a lot to discuss, so I'm going to try and take this one by one. So one of the first things that Mr. Eugene mentioned was about um, prostate health and what are some of the things men can do. Um, he mentioned two very easy to get anti-inflammatory foods, actually. Not even necessarily, they're herbs, but they're also foods. Turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. It's underutilized in our community. It's a very warming spice. If we, if we understand the condition of the prostate, we know that it's typically enlarged, which is an inflammatory or a swelling condition. And so roots like turmeric and ginger are both anti-inflammatory in nature, and both can be consumed as a tea, meaning you can peel the root and boil it and just sip a glass, a cup of tea. And by a cup, I would say anywhere from four to eight ounces a day. But if you're a person who likes raw fruits and vegetables and you know how to use a Vitamix or a Nutribullet, you can absolutely throw um, a quarter inch to an inch of ginger in a smoothie as well as a quarter inch to an inch of turmeric in a smoothie and consume that every day. And that is an easy hack to prevent not just prostate cancer but other inflammatory issues that happen in the body. So those are two easy things that you can do. And um, I'd love to offer herbs, but as an herbalist, I understand that different herbs work for di work different ways in different people's bodies. And so for those, I'd encourage um, viewers to set up a free consultation because as a naturopath, I try not to give sweeping recommendations for you, what to use for specific conditions because I honor and I recognize the body as individual and unique. Then you talked about um, the idea that um, 
overactivity and use of the male reproductive parts lends itself to um, reduce function of the prostate gland. And again, I think there are other influences there that we may not fully understand, but certainly we want to be mindful of how we are using our bodies and support our bodies in a way that it does not have an impact on the normal function of all of our parts. One of the things that conventional medicine does is teaches us that our body parts are separate, but they're really not. So where one body part may be reduced in function or fail, there are other body parts that overcompensate and that pattern continues over a period of time where we're just kind of like using our bodies up. But from a as a natural path, working in the natural health field, we look at the body as a system. So we recognize that yes, there are other activities that you can do that cause diminished or reduced function in the prostate, but we also teach you how to support your body as a system and not necessarily focus on one part of the body. So we want you to evaluate and use and support your body as a whole. And then finally, you brought up the subject of medical marijuana, which is a hot topic right now, actually. And it's funny because I've had this conversation um, before as a guest on the show. I do a lot of work in the community around substance abuse treatment and prevention. And miracle marijuana is something that is a very grave concern for me right now. We are currently offering, as part of a drug-free communities coalition at the class agency, something called the 411 on 420. And for those of you who don't know, 420 is essentially marijuana culture. You know, as a plant medicine, marijuana in the past as a traditional plant medicine was never intended to be smoked. And the synthetic and chemical forms of the hemp plant that are being manufactured and distributed as medical marijuana today is causing more harm in the community than it is helping. That is not to say that the plant does not have its medicinal ben benefits, but I think um, there are many discussions that need to be had around the use of medical marijuana in our community. Um, I think when we get closer to launching these town hall discussions around marijuana use, not medical marijuana, specifically recreational marijuana use and how it's falling into the hands of younger kids and um, the harm that it's causing to brain development and later the um, diminished mental health that we are seeing as a result of its use, it's definitely a conversation to be had. It is not a solution to our health needs, and we really need to, to table that discussion as an ongoing discussion. Mr. Eugene, we're coming down to the end of our show. I want to thank you for calling in and putting um, those questions on the air. I'm definitely going to table that med med medical marijuana uh, question because it's a conversation that I really want to have with my community and I will be bringing that up again. Look forward to the 411 on 420, more um, community-based activities. I want to tell you about a couple things that are coming up this weekend. The Detroit Zumba All-Stars are having a Zumbathon on Saturday the 16th and also my Afro Herbalism class will be offered in my office on Saturday at 1 o'clock. If you're interested in learning in about herbalism. Afro herbalism is a free class and you're welcome to join us. The website is www.eiw-dt.com. Please go online, find us and join us this Saturday at one o'clock. Thank you so much for being watching Expose Under the Sun and we look forward to you joining us next week. Thank you.